Assalamu alaikum. The horrific and brutal rape of an innocent 12 year old girl in Jigawa State and that of Vera, a student in a church, has shocked and shaken every right thinking human being to the core. It has also galvanized us into action to gather, to brainstorm, to mobilize, to inspire, to act, and most importantly, to bring about the change in the laws of the land, to enforce the strictest and most stringent punishment to a predator who preys upon an innocent woman or a child. Rape is not just forced intercourse. Rape means to violate, destroy, and inhabit the very fiber of a woman. When this heinous atrocity happens to a child, the crime is worse a million times over. This shame, this so-called dishonor, as called in our society, is not the woman's nor the child's. The shame, the dishonor, is on the predator, the rapist, the abuser. I refuse to call the woman or the child a victim. Being a victim implies being an unfortunate loser, an object of pity, and why should they be? The women and children upon whom this forceful act is committed are survivors. The very word is empowering. It means to survive and rise above all odds, against all circumstances. That is precisely one of the main aim of our movement, Mars V. We aim to holistically address all aspects of the aftermath of a horrific rape. The impact is not just physical. Physical injuries and scars heal. It is the psychological scars that stay lifelong and cannot be erased. We at Mars V must strive to heal the mental, psychological, and emotional anguish of the survivor. The survivor is beset by a thousand self-doubts and racked by guilt, thinking maybe it was something she said, did, or wore. That is never the case. The very fact that a toddler or a baby in arms is raped and mutilated proves that the beast in a monster's mind does not need any provocation to act on his evil impulses. The survivor must be reassured that she is blameless and must be gently but surely urged to shed whatever guilt and self-doubt she has. In the case of a child, the task is even more uphill, for they do not even know the impact of their violation or how wrong it is, especially when the perpetrator is known to them. Very sadly, 95% of all child sexual molestations are done by someone known to the child, a relative, a cousin, or friend of the family. The child is threatened not to speak of the deed, and if perchance he or she does, it is met with disbelief by the family and dismissed as impossible, leaving the little child feeling completely isolated, alone, and lost. Even as I write this, my heart breaks to think of the storm of despair and fear in the little child's heart. Psychological and emotional repair of the survivor must be at the forefront of our movement with our collective and sustained support. A survivor can and will be able to rise, be strong and stand tall. Albeit emotional healing is a very gradual and individual process. We must be there giving them the psychological support and confidence to enable healing. Another point that we should be pondering on is that child molestations are not gender-based. Little girls, as well as an equal number of little boys, have been subject to sexual assault by sick and perverted men, and sometimes women. We must be vigilant that any child, irrespective of gender, can be sexually molested and assaulted. I have lived enough to know that minor boys subjected to such perversions as children or as adolescents sometimes grow to adulthood, believing that this unacceptable behavior is the norm. From the bedrock of the scars of their childhood, most unfortunately, upon being adults themselves, they may behave in the same perverse manner with other innocent children, repeating the vicious circle of perversion, humiliation, and assault on an innocent body, mind, and soul. Hence, I repeat and underline the need for psychological and emotional counseling of a minor survivor by empathetic and qualified psychologist to enable them to deal with childhood trauma and emerge from it as well-balanced and whole adults. While on the subject of psychological and emotional impact of rape and sexual assault, I must stress that sensitivity and empathy are the most basic and crucial traits required from all of us who aim to fight this war with the survivors. Starting with the first responders to come to the aid of the survivor 
especially the legal counselors and lawyers. It takes immense courage to stand up among strangers in the intimidating environment of a courtroom and repeat and relieve the harrowing incidents over and over again. Most survivors often being subjected to days and weeks of intrusive questions and examinations by defense team give up the fight rather than go through the humiliation and anguish of relieving their trauma. This is precisely what the defense team of the Predator hopes for, a withdrawal of the charges and the monster walking free on a technicality to repeat the act and destroy more innocent lives yet again. Our courts, judges and lawyers, both defense and prosecutions, trying case of rape and sexual assault for women and children must be sensitized to deal with the survivor with empathy and respect. The dignity and confidentiality of the survivor must be maintained as sacrosanct. And only those persons absolutely vital to the hearing of the case must be present in the court. Also important is the fast track courts to hear cases of rape and sexual assault an extremely prolonged time lapse since the time the crime was committed till the time the case comes up for hearing dilutes the evidence as well as the impact of the case. It also gives time for the predator or the defense team to approach the survivor or the survivor's family to urge or threaten them to settle out of court or withdraw the case completely. Sadly, many do. Among the next Mars V webinar topics to come, we hope to bring respected persons from the medical field, speaking of the psychological impact of sexual abuse on the survivor and how family support is crucial in overcoming this trauma. Also, they must speak on the need to do away with the stigma attached to the survivor of rape and sexual abuse. It is the only crime where the victim and not the criminal is shamed. If a person is robbed of their property or possessions, they are sympathized with and the thief is punished. In a case of rape, when the loss is far greater, that of dignity, self-esteem, and mental equilibrium, the punishment for the criminal needs to be far greater. The webinar, I hope, will talk of eradicating the stigma so wrongly attached to the survival of sexual abuse. The year 2020 will not just be remembered as the year of COVID-19. We will make certain that it goes down in the history of our country as the year we became fearless and turn the predators into the prey and the hunters into the hunted. The road is long and the battle has just begun. We are strong and our intentions are just. With God on our side, we shall march on and we shall overcome. Thank you very much. Mariam Sanusi, Mars V, Nigeria.